Uh, David Seymour, and I cannot. He looks like he's in a school classroom. Or are those some kids who've seen him pictures behind you? Where are you, David? Where are you talking to us from? Oh, this is my electorate office in Epsom, Shaw. Oh, good idea. Some, um, some pictures that some very kind kids uh, drew for me. All right. Well, um, it's going to have to be a three-way, as they say, on, on the results we got, we got today. That is still, is it not, the best result ever for Act in an election? Yeah, it is. And I want to start by thanking um, my neighbours on the Epsom electorate who have sent me to Parliament four times now. Uh, my commitment is to work hard as a local MP. Also acknowledge the electorate of Tamaki. Uh, it's the first time ACT has won a second electorate in its history. Um, and actually it's the, the second time that any party other than National Labor have done that. Um, and finally, uh, for the quarter million odd New Zealanders who have trusted their party vote for ACT, uh, you voted for real change. Uh, our job now uh, is to deliver it within the confines of the uh, coalition uh, arrangements that, that will emerge in the next week or so, I suspect. Yeah, and week or so, you're talking strange. We've just been talking to Winston Peters. You're talking the same language and timeline he is. He says he was on the phone to Luxon at two minutes past two this afternoon. Have you had a conversation with Christopher Luxon in the last half hour or so? Yeah, you yeah, know, we've had a good chat actually yeah. about um, the, the situation that we face and how we get the change that New Zealanders have voted for and um, even those who didn't vote for it, I believe can benefit from. I think yeah. that we can do a good job for the whole country. All right. One thing Winston did say, and I, I've got to say, he was... Um, there was no rancor towards ACT. There was a positive attitude uh, towards ACT. I think you've displayed the same positivity uh, in recent days and in, in the last few weeks as well. He did say he think, thought it would be necessary for not necessarily the three of you as individuals, but for the three teams to get together in a room and nut some stuff out. That, that, that's the way this process has got to go. I presume you've got no problems with that. Act's got no problems with that, given the political reality that's been delivered by these results today? Well, you've got to respect the result of the election, the parliament that's been elected and make it work exactly, you know, who meets who and what room at what time. I mean, you know, we, we, can, we can get into that sort of commentary if you like. But, um, no, no, but, but you know, what's clear is that... Mm. Yeah, but you're prepared to talk with New Zealand first. You're prepared to look forward, not backwards. Um, well, we always look forward, but we're always honest about the realities of, of who we're dealing with. And often the best predictor of future performance is past performance. And I, I think we've got to be honest about that. Um, however, uh, where we are right now, uh, our job is to deliver the change that people have voted for. Uh, you know, we've got to fix this economy. We've got to get inflation under control. It seems to be getting worse at the moment. Uh, when the rest of the world it's getting better. We've got to restore consequences for crime because you know, we have lawlessness that didn't stop just because there was an election. The policy change needs to follow. And we need to end the division that perhaps will become the signature of the Ardern Hipkins government uh, was a, a government that actually left people more divided having been elected on a platform of kindness. So, you know, solving those problems is, is paramount. Mm. Uh, boy, Maori Party, um, they trounced... Labour in the Maori uh, in the Maori electorates largely, largely, and I mentioned this to Winston Peters. The problem is the Maori Party have done incredibly well. They have beaten Labour in that segment of the electorate, but their rhetoric and their positioning is very, very extreme, um, and very, very non-mainstream and non-conciliatory, um, and it kind of throws into stark contest uh, contrast some of the polarisation that we've got in New Zealand politics right now? Well, I think a couple of things. I mean, one is, you know, Labor have been trounced in just about every electorate. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You know, my old schoolmate, Carlos Chung, managed to win Mount Roskill. Yeah. Uh, when you look at that, it's, it's really about the performance of the minister who, you know, didn't know what shares he owned. Um, you can make similar comments about the performance, uh, for example, Calvin of, Davis, um, Pina Hedinare. Yeah, Calvin Davis. I mean, I mean, I, yeah, I don't even know if Calvin Davis knew what day it was most of the time. Probably showed up to Parliament on days it wasn't sitting. Um, but, you know, on the other hand, um, the Maori Party, you know, so in part I think they're there because of Labor's performance and individual Labor and peace performance. Uh, however, you're right that they got 3% of the vote 17% you know, of New Zealand identifies as Māori, so it's it's a minority 
um, of Māori who actually chose to give them their party vote. Mm. A very small minority, in fact, and probably a lot of people who aren't Māori may have voted for them for various reasons. Um, so you've now got a real challenge of showing that the Māori Party do not represent uh, Māori. Uh, mm. They represent 3% of New Zealand at best. And our view is that we need to bring them into a conversation about how New Zealand goes forward um, because the kind of performance that they've got engaged in in the previous parliament, uh, that hasn't solved a single problem of getting one more kid to school with lunch or under a, or a roof over their head or a future. Mm. Um, so the challenge for them now is going to be, OK, yep, you've done the theatrics, where's the problem solving? And that, that's what the government's going to be focused on. And if they can't be part of that, I think they might find um, that, uh, you know, in a few years' time, uh, people have realised they're a one-trick pony. Mm.